It is great to have you on the Family Goals podcast with David Pollock and Pastor Jay. I'm Joel and House, and on this podcast, we want to encourage you to grow closer to God, to strengthen your marriage, and to inspire your family to reach its highest potential. Being a pastor is one of the biggest blessings of my life. It can also be really challenging. Often it feels like everyone wants something from you. That's one of the reasons that it's so refreshing when you find a trusted ministry partner, a Christ-centered, church-driven organization that's truly there to help you carry your church's mission forward. For me, Compassion International has been one of those trusted ministry partners. Hear me say this, Compassion International is much more than asking people in your church to sponsor a child. Compassion offers proven, no-cost resources to help pastors make mission and discipleship a personal priority for individuals and families in their churches. My local Compassion team is in my corner. They genuinely care about me and my church. Learn more about partnering with Compassion at Compassion.com slash Family Goals. Take a listen as we continue our discussion with marriage counselors Daniel and Bonnie. When, uh, when a husband or wife feels that tension or they feel that they're unhappy, like they're un- unhappy in the marriage, um, what, what should they do? Like, like if someone's listening to this podcast right now and they're, when we said tension, that they immediately thought of themselves or they're unhappy mm. in their marriage. What, what should they do? What steps should they take? I'm going to defer to Bonnie on this because I think for the most part, God, and I don't want to blanket right statement, but I think for the most part, God wired our wives a lot more in tune with that connectiveness, that heart connectiveness. And guys, we're very driven and we're very, you know, we want to, we want to push our kids to the next thing. A passage of scripture we read with our kids this morning was in Colossians where it tells dad, you know, don't frustrate your kids, right? To the level mm-hmm. of- Don't exasperate, gonna, yeah. Yeah, don't exasperate your kids. And and I had to confess, man, I, I want you guys, I have dreams for you. I want you to be the best God, you know, has for you and the best that you can be. And I, and I have a, I have a struggle with pushing you too much and at the detriment of the family. And so Bonnie's better at picking up on those subtle connectedness nuances. So, well, and I think, I think a lot of times, and it's not all the time, but a lot of times the wife is kind of in the, Daniel always says that the, that the husband is the, he's the head of the family, but the, the wife is the heart of the family. And I think we can keep, we can kind of feel more of what's going on with the temperature of the home and in a marriage relationship, sometimes the wife becomes unhappy quicker because she's not connected emotionally and she's not feeling the, um, the connection, um, an intimate connection. It's like, okay, we're running all the stuff. We're doing all the things, but Hey, I miss you. And sometimes we might have a little bit better gauge of that. And cause men do have a, sometimes a better ability to move forward and keep everything pushing forward. But, but in the home, I know for me, I can, I can feel those things quicker because I'm in, in tune with the kids. And, and sometimes it takes courage to just say, Hey, um, I know we're kind of headed down a track and I know that it's, it's got full momentum going right now, but this doesn't feel right. Something's hard. Something feels off, off to me. And just getting the courage to have that conversation with your husband sometimes is like, oh, okay. Because I know he's, he's got um, the strong leadership personality and, and sometimes it's like, okay, I know you're excited about this direction, but can we just press yeah. yeah, let's press pause. I'm not saying let's derail or get off the tracks completely, but I want to press pause and turn towards you because we can do life shoulder to shoulder so much that we get to the point sometimes we're even doing life back to back, just managing. And when we reach that point, we're back to back. I'm not looking at him anymore and I'm missing him. I need to pause and turn towards him and say, hey, I need you to turn towards me. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's hard sometimes because you don't know you're putting yourself out there with your your you're making a bid for connection and that's not always reciprocated. So I just, I mean husbands need to kind of lean in and listen to their wives when they feel like the family is disconnected. A couple of things are so good right there that I love. One, I completely agree. The woman is way more in tune. I, I think women have better senses i think women see things for what they are better than men i think men were more prideful and motivated and like go 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 and so i i completely agree with that you know i i think i think what you said which is the most important part about that though 
is how you say it. Because Mm -hmm. I will listen to anything my wife says, but if we can learn to just phrase things just a little bit better, because when you come at me as a husband and you tell me I'm wrong or you tell me I need to do something, I immediately, in my head, I immediately fail. I've failed. That's the way I look at it. But, but if women can... And you put your defenses up. You put your defenses yeah. up, and, and those yeah. aren't your best spots. And, and your best place is probably where you thrive. But, but if women can learn to just say, hey, like, hey, can we, can we look at this and say, we, not you. Yeah. Like, you don't need to do this. If you just say, hey, babe, like, can we look at how we're doing this? And, and I, I, I want to see maybe if there's a better way we could do this. Dude, you get so much more than if you say, you're not doing this correctly. Like, you say you're not doing this correctly to a man... And with our pride and our egos, like, you're not going to get the best result. But if you can just throw a we in there, and listen, at this point in my marriage now, almost 20 years in, I know what my wife's saying, but when she says we, it's still sweet, and I still appreciate it. Like, as opposed to, <laughs> yeah. you suck, and you need to fix this, or you're driving my our kids this direction by doing this. So, I just think, I love that. I love the women. Uh, I love the, the men are the, the head of the family, but the women are the heart. I'm stealing that 100%. I love that. <laughs> but I just think I think how we communicate together will, will be very successful. Those, those talks with your spouse are so important. I mean, just yeah. y'all getting away. Our, ours is the kitchen. The kids go to bed. It's the kitchen, and we're just going to talk about everything that I did wrong that day and, and, asking, <laughs> quest- and asking questions. Like, I, I love to ask my wife, like, hey, babe, what do you see that I'm missing the mark? I mean, I, I enjoy that. I, I personally love that because I, I know I'm not perfect and I know I need to work on things, but I, I need to hear them too, though. That goes back to the women. She sees things that I do with my daughter better than I do, and she can give me great insight, but I think if we use it together, a lot of times it, it makes it better if we can just learn how to phrase things and communicate well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that communication, <clears throat> if, if you're not connected if you don't have meaning, if you don't have a strong friendship and heart connection and intimacy and not just like the sexual intimacy, but the into me, you see, I'm going to let you be, I'm going to be vulnerable with you and see those places. If you don't have that strong connection, good communication really doesn't help a whole lot because it's kind of like if, if I get in a fender bender, I can come out and say things nicely to that guy but I don't know him and he doesn't know me and good communication will break down really quickly if he's a jerk because <laughs> I don't have a connection with him. But in our marriage, if we're not connected and we don't have that strong friendship and intimacy, then saying nice things break down after a few minutes, right? Once you give a little pushback, a little pushback, then those emotions begin to, to get big and saying nice things go out the window. Because going back, I'm selfish and I want to win. And she, you know, she tends to, you know, we're all selfish and we all want to win. You can say it. I'm selfish. So, <laughs> so selfish brat. We, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but if we have that connectedness, then guess what? We're going to have arguments in our marriage. You're going to have, you're going to say stupid stuff. But well, and I'm even going to say things that I, when I call things out, they can be hurtful because they're true. Yeah. 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 And, but if we're connected in our, in our hearts and in our friendship, and we have this deep friendship, then I'm probably going to be more likely to come back in the next 24 hours and say, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm sorry. I was a jerk. You know, you were right because I value her and I value this friendship. And when we, when we have kid, when we have those deep connections and friendship with our spouse or with friends, you, you want to salvage them. And you don't want stupid, petty stuff to ruin what you have with that person. And when you're friends with somebody and connected with them, like you said, it's you you care about how you communicate to them. You're kinder in the way you talk to them. You present things in a way that's not like, I'm just trying to get my point across, but yeah. but I love you. And that's why I'm saying this to you. And that's where the we comes in, because it's. If I come at him, then I'm attacking us Mm -hmm. because there is a we here. And it's, I tend to be a lot nicer to, to my friends and the people I love and care about. And so the way you communicate with your spouse is if you, if you just talk to them the way you would a friendship that you value, then it would make life a lot easier in the home. I know you have something profound to say, Pastor Jay, to follow up on a great question, but Bonnie, where are you from? 
Because you are country as a turnip green. I love it. <laughs> Where are you from? I, I'm from um, Southeast Georgia, from Swainsboro. Swainsboro. Believe it or not, <laughs> I've been up in this area for 20-something years, and I my accent is not nearly as thick as it used to be. It's still fantastic. So we- David, when we met, I mean, I'm from Warner Robins, so I'm from middle Georgia, but we were a military family. So um, there were words she said I couldn't even understand. And I love it. I'm like, That's this amazing. is the sexiest thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's outstanding. Sorry, Pastor Jay. I know you got a profound question, but that was the accent was getting in there. I, d- I did have a very profound question, but when he when he talked about her accent being sexy, that kind of threw, <laughs> that threw a wrench in the, hey, it's a marriage adventure, okay? Yeah, get so, it, get uh, with it, Pastor Jay. We're not you even going. I don't, I don't even want to go there with with the marriage adventure. But uh, y'all mentioned this several times: the importance of friendship and marriage, like an intimate friendship. You probably said it like ten times in the previous uh, dialogue. How do you develop a friendship in marriage? Like, how, how do you develop a close friendship with your spouse? So I want to let me give you a quick model for when we work with couples. We give this model. Um, our marriage is a lot like a house, right? So when we moved into our house, we moved to this farm a couple of years ago, and we always said, we'll know it's our place when, when Bonnie's heart leaps, like she grew up in the country, she grew up on 300 acres of land. And so getting back to the country was awesome for her. And so when we pulled up to this place, she was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And then we walk into the house and she's like, I can't, I can't live in this. I can't live in this. It was a, it's a fifth. It was built, built in the fifties, an old farmhouse. And I'm like, Bonnie, I, I, she sees details. I see vision. That's the way we operate. We, we always, uh, we say that we live life the way we paint a room. So I paint with a big roller brush. I get a lot done and I make a mess. She paints with the detail brush and she goes around and does all the details. Right. It takes three years, but yeah. Yeah, not nah, not so much. good with details. And so when we saw this house, I was like, Bonnie, if it checks out structurally, all it needs is it needs some flooring and needs some paint, needs some countertops, a little bathroom. It, we, I can't, I can't rebuild what you're seeing outside, but we could rebuild this house. This isn't, you know, so it came in and structurally it checked out great. And so we, we put down some, some flooring LVP. We did some paint on the walls, did some countertops and now She loves it. And our house is a lot like our marriage is a lot like that, like our house. So there's three parts. The most important part of your house is that foundation. If that foundation is cracked or sinking or whatever, I am not worried about structural parts of my house, like the roof. I might patch it temporarily, but I am not worried about curtains. curtains. I ain't worried about paint on the walls. I'm worried about that foundation. And that foundation as a Christian marriage is life in Christ. And it, and it boils down to this. It's not even church attendance. I mean, that's, that's in it. It helps. But it is, am I abiding in Christ? And is she abiding in Christ? Mm-hmm. And Jesus said, if you abide in me, as I abide in you, you'll bear much fruit. And what is that fruit? It's nine, it's, it's his personality. It's these nine things that will transform any marriage. Mm-hmm. It's love, joy peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. If we have those lives, Christ's life living through us, I have the power to, to heal any, any marriage, right? Any issue I have in my marriage. So that's the foundation is life in Christ. And then, then dive into a church and dive into a small group and serve. Yeah. But man, have that individual relationship with Christ. And then the second part of your home of next importance is structure. The structure of your home, the framing, the subfloor, the roof. If those things are damaged, I ain't worried about paint on my walls or curtains. I'm worried about the structure, the infrastructure of my home. And in our marriage, that infrastructure is just what we talked about a minute ago. It's that friendship. It's connectiveness, connectedness. It's that intimacy that that ability to be vulnerable with my spouse Mm -hmm. guys the biggest thing you can be vulnerable with if you're like most men if you can be vulnerable with your spouse your wife about your uh about your fears that's a big thing guys Uh, that's when i know i'm at a vulnerable a good place with her is when i can look at her and say honestly this scares me to death right that's hard for a guy to admit it's a good barometer for me right um 
And so that connectedness, that's the structure of your marriage. And then the third piece, it's, it's all those, um, it's the cosmetics of the marriage. It's your curtains, it's your paint on your house, it's your, your flooring, your cabinets, all that. That all stuff is good. And if you don't have it, then you're not gonna be comfortable in your home. That's why you make it a home, right? You, you bring in furniture that you like, you bring in pictures and paint that you like. It makes it homey. But if I got structural issues or even worse foundation issues, I ain't worried about the curtains. And in our marriage, this, those, those curtains, those, those things like that, it's communication, it's conflict resolution, it's financial management. That's the stuff that we tend to think that people focus on and they want to get help for because they that's what they're seeing. That's what they're living with all day long. There, symptoms. There is the symptoms they're seeing. Oh, we're not communicating well. We can't resolve conflict. And that's where we tend people tend to focus. Let's fix that. But back to what you said, is that friendship in the intimacy. If they can begin to work on that, we knew what that looked like when we first got married. We were spending time together. We were finding hobbies together. We were we were on the same page. We we continued to get to know each other. And then somewhere along the way, we just stop. And we stop talking. The kids get involved. I love what you said about how at the end of the day that you're, you and your wife communicate in the kitchen after the kids go to bed. Mm -hmm. That's something that for us, that's that's been a big thing that we would put the kids to bed and we go to bed at the same time every night and that's pillow talk. That's our, that's our time to reconnect at the end of the day. And then we find fun things to do that we can both enjoy to answer your question about how you build that friendship. It's remembering what it was like when you first met and you were dating and it's don't stop doing those things because the busyness, the distraction, all those things come in and then we start running our kids lives and we forget that God put us together and we're going to be together when they're gone, Lord willing, if we continue to build that connection and that friendship. So if we can, I, we want to give, give the listeners a quick illustration of ways they can connect. We call it the five things. It's kind of like looking at your hand. Number one is your daily connection. And what is that? That's daily check-ins. It's the, it's, it's the, the texts during the day of, Hey, how'd that meeting go? Or how you doing? Or a little heart emoji. Hey, I love you. It's those check-ins throughout the day, those little bids for connection. And then, and then also to go back to, we go to bed to, at the same time every night. Sometimes that looks like actually going to the room and going to bed and having pillow talk or doing other fun, merry things. Or sometimes it's just going out on the porch and hanging out and talking, sitting in the swing. Uh, sometimes it's going for a walk after dinner. You know, it's those daily connections. So daily. And then you got weekly, which everybody knows what a date night looks like. And it might not be something that a lot of people can afford every week. We get that. But you can still create that time in your week to connect for longer than just that minute. Put the bed, the kids to bed early, let the kids eat early, put them to bed and go do their own thing or whatever. And then you've got a date night at home, even tap into the grandparents or somebody else, but make sure you've got the weekly date night where you have longer than a few minutes to just talk. And it's just something fun. And don't spend all your time talking about the kids because you probably spend enough of your week talking about the kids. So. But if food is involved, that's considered a date. <laughs> So okay. Costco, that counts, right? I love that. So, I love going shopping at Costco with my wife. I enjoy that thoroughly. Works. Yeah. That's a great day. You have night, mentioned that right? many times. Yes, it's awesome. It's outstanding. All right, what's four? That's right. And they have an amazing new chocolate chip cookie, I've heard. So uh, I'd better. stay away from the cookie, Daniel. Now you lost me. Yeah, you just, you you just, just went, totally you lost rails, Dave. He okay? doesn't eat cookies or no, we sweets. Do oh. Well, so All right, what's number three? What's the third thing? No, it's four. Pay oh, attention, we're, Pastor. Oh, we already gave you three. three. Oh, no, 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 he's right. Three. Daily, weekly, and then monthly. Monthly. Yes. Monthly, you're just going to have a big fun. And that could be with the kids. That could be a family thing. But you're going to do something fun once a month. And it doesn't have to be massive or it can be massive. That's one of the problems in our marriages is we get away from having fun. And fun is a huge thing for connectedness. So what does fun look so, like for y'all? What does that, what does that mean? Give me, give me some examples. Well, I can tell you what fun looks like for me. <laughs> okay. What does it look like? <laughs> but if you're, if you're talking about, if you're talking about doing a, if you're talking about doing something like a month, that's really, really fun. That stands out. What is that? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, for well, like this past weekend, our kids had a weekend away at the church, and so we have a little cabin on our property that we bring couples in to stay in. We got away in our cabin for the weekend. Okay. We just made. I mean, we didn't have to spend any money doing that, but we went out to dinner. We just went places that we we picked restaurants we've never been to, tried something new in the area for us. Go to those new places. We'll and- go hiking. We'll you know we'll we'll just do something out that's just fun and brainless. Okay. Go kayaking. Yeah, Bonnie loves kayaking, and it's cheap you know once you own the kayaks and so we have a lake near us so we go do that that's a lot of fun sometimes it's binge watching the series together right and that's that's fun don't do that all the time but it's fun to do sometimes Mm -hmm. and so that's your monthly once a month just do something fun and then quarterly quarterly is get away for a night Mm -hmm. right yep if you can if you can get away quarterly for a night or send the kids away yeah. quarterly for a night and that way it's it's pretty free if you got in-laws and then the the um once a year the last thing the fifth thing is yearly that's do something for marriage enrichment whether it's read a book together go on a marriage retreat do something where you're intentional about where are we in our relationship i know some couples will get away and do like a, a state of the union getaway because it's like where are we what goals did we have as a family last year were we did we meet those where are we in our relationship do you feel more connected to me than you did last year or do you feel less where did we move off track what's our family doing um find ways to look at it because we look at everything else in our lives whether it be our our cars we keep them maintained we look at our our health we if we get a few pounds above we back that off we try to yeah 401k all these things we invest in but we sometimes just put our marriage on cruise control and think it should just work. But it, it doesn't. And I know it's not a sexy thing to say we have to maintain, but it's important to maintain. And so chances are, if you're doing those five things with any sort of consistency, listen, we might miss a date night. But you know what? We've been connecting every day, so it's it doesn't hurt that bad, right? And And, and so if you're doing those five things with any sort of consistency, and you're looking at this and you're keeping the pulse on your relationship, I mean, you're not going to be one of those couples that after six years, we've been living in miserable. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to be okay. You're going to have, you're not going to live like this in your marriage. You're going to live like this. You'll have your ups and downs, but you won't have these big, massive, you know, and things. and when you do have the massive things, because we're all, I mean, we're, we're living in a fallen world, stuff's going to happen. It's going to hit, but we've got the infrastructure now to be able to yeah. handle it and, and meet it face on together. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, it's interesting. I, I, I've, I've been around people personally that they're like, we're really good together. And when our kids are gone, I think we'll be really good again. I, I remember a buddy telling me that um, they're divorced, you know, like mm. the, the kids can't be the priority. The kids have to come after each other. And I think it's a hard thing. I think it's a thing that people weren't taught growing up. And so it's not always the easiest thing to swallow, but marriages have to come first. A healthy marriage is going to bless your kids in, in so many ways. And so I think making that a priority is, is obviously important. Thank you all so much. We appreciate you all you know, joining us. We appreciate you all upgrading the Internet. We tried to do this earlier, but you alls Internet <laughs> stunk. It was very ungood. So we had to we had to redo it, but we appreciate the wisdom and hopefully everybody can take away some things that will strengthen their marriage and um, make it an adventure like the marriage yeah. adventure. Very. I like your very practical stuff, the five things and the house illustration. Let me ask you one more question. Let's close with this one. Because another goal of the marriage adventure is to help people have a, a healthy biblical marriage. So what does a healthy biblical marriage look like? It's not a perfect marriage. We have a perfect marriage, and that's our marriage with Christ. He's our true groom. And one day we'll be in eternity with our true groom, and we will have that perfect marriage with him. So on earth, it's always going to be flawed. You're going to have arguments. You're going to go through stuff. That's not what we're talking about. A healthy biblical marriage is one man with one woman for the time we're on earth together, right? And if you've already found that you've messed that up, well, that's okay. There's forgiveness in Christ. And if I miss a meal, I don't stop eating altogether. I get up the next day and I eat again, right? And so in your marriage, if you've found that you've messed up, that's okay. There's forgiveness in it. There's redemption in it mm-hmm. and continue to go forward. A healthy biblical marriage for us looks like when I'm abiding in Christ and she's abiding in Christ 
and Christ is living his life through us, she is the biggest recipient of Christ's life in me, and I'm the biggest recipient of Christ's life in her. There are things that God wants to teach and, and show your spouse about his love that Bonnie will never experience if I'm not walking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And there's parts of God's love he wants to show me that I will never experience if she's not walking with Jesus. And then guess what? Our kids benefit. And then the people around us benefit. Our neighbors, the people in our community benefits when that happens. And that's when that's how a, a, a marriage becomes healthy biblically is when we lock eyes with Jesus every day and lock arms with our spouse every day. Oh, mm. Thank you for listening to this week's Family Goals podcast with David Pollock and Pastor Jay. It is so easy to get caught up in the busyness of life, which is why I love when Bonnie said this, turn towards me. It's just that simple act of turning your attention to your spouse, and it can make all the difference. I love how practical they are too. What is your home built on? What is its foundation? Is it strong? Is it built on Christ? We're not worried about the decorations, or the structure of the home or the paint on the walls if the foundation is not solid. Build your life and build your marriage on Christ, on Jesus Christ. Are you connecting with your spouse? It's so important to connect daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly with your spouse. Every marriage looks a little different how you go about this, but as long as you're investing in your friendship with your spouse, in your relationship with God, you will have a healthy marriage. If you found this episode helpful, encouraging, or entertaining, please let us know by subscribing to the podcast or by writing a review. You can also reach us on Instagram and Twitter at Family Goals Pod. Thank you again for listening to the Family Goals Podcast, and we'll catch you next week.